For Americans old enough to remember the 1970s, the images were haunting. Once again, we witnessed a harrowing evacuation of Americans and our allies at the end of a long, deadly, and costly foreign war. We asked, did America fail to learn the lessons of Vietnam? Did our leaders ignore repeated misadventures in Afghanistan, with one great power after the next failing to liberate that nation from Taliban tyranny? Failing to learn history's lessons is not a new problem. This week, the Torah presents a conversation between God and Moses as the children of Israel stand on the precipice of the Promised Land. Moses delivers a final prophecy. God tells him that after entering the land, the people will go astray. They will forsake God and therefore be ready prey. And many evils and troubles shall befall them. God dictates a warning, which Moses will recite to the Israelites in, the next, in next week's portion. Still, the Israelites do sin. They worship other gods and oppress the poor in their own midst. They fail to learn the lessons of the golden calf. Ultimately, the Israelites are conquered as God empowers the Babylonians to exact the punishment forecast centuries earlier on the banks of the Jordan River. <coughs> Mark Twain reputedly said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. In recent weeks, we could hear the rhymes. Journalist Jeff Kaplan reminds us, <coughs> it was April 1975. America cut a peace deal with the communists and our troops came home. But the enemy kept fighting and the South Vietnamese surrendered their country after 58,000 US troops had laid down their lives. As the enemy closed in on the US Embassy in Saigon, Armed Forces Radio played White Christmas, a signal that it was time to evacuate. It was chaos. Desperate Vietnamese tried to scale the embassy walls and get out of the country. One photo in particular stands out. An Air America chopper perches on the tiny roof of an apartment building just a block away from the embassy. Blades spinning, evacuees crowded a rickety staircase or ladder, so desperate and so urgent the mission that the ladder bowed under the weight, their weight as they scrambled to get up, get on, and get out. And as they ran up that ladder and the helicopter readied for takeoff, the photographer snapped the shutter. In recent weeks, we have seen photographs that reminded us of that iconic image from Saigon. We have been all too aware of American troops' lives lost, not to mention devastating, life-altering injuries in an effort that ended badly. And we have seen Afghans as understandably desperate to leave their countries as the Vietnamese before them. Because of the way that history rhymes, we may be tempted to equate the two wars more than is warranted. On this 20th anniversary of 9-11, we must remember, President Bush ordered the invasion of Afghanistan after terrorists based there and abetted by the Taliban had committed an infamous attack on the American homeland, murdering thousands of our fellow citizens. No such assault prompted U.S. involvement in Vietnam. The end of American inter intervention in Indochina came after an anti-war effort that, d that divided the nation. By contrast, in 2021, the vast majority of Americans, including Presidents Biden and Trump, agreed that U.S. military needed to leave Afghanistan, that American soldiers, sailors, Marines, and airmen should no longer be put at risk of life and limb in a war we would not win. Similarly, Americans across the political spectrum were appalled by a botched evacuation, horrified by the deaths of 13 Marines who fell victim to ISIS terrorism, 
and sharply concerned, deeply concerned about Afga Afghans who had risked their lives to join the American-led effort. Americans have divergent views about opening our country to refugees more broadly, but are remarkably unified in eagerness to welcome and assist Afghans at their hour of need. Those refugees offer America an opportunity to learn from history in a positive way. In the mid and late 1970s, more than a million Vietnamese refugees fled their country after the end of the war. As Thu Da Huang Ha writes, in 1975, when a first wave of refugees fled after the fall of South Vietnam, polls showed little support for welcoming the, them into the U.S. In the late 1970s, a second larger group of migrants, the boat people, traversed dangerous waters to leave Vietnam. They paid exorbitant fees and risked abduction, rape, and death at sea to escape the re-education camps that had sprung up after the Northern victory over the South. In 1979, U.S. President Jimmy Carter announced that he would double the number of refugees from Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos accepted into the United States from 7,000 per month to 14,000. A poll from CBS and the New York Times showed that 62% of Americans disapproved. He did it anyway. American Reform Judaism opened its arms to Vietnamese refugees. With a record of wel welcoming refugees to this country and reflecting on a history that has often found our people displaced as refugees, the Central Conference of American Rabbis resolved, we deplore the sentiment in our own country which would close the gates to Vietnamese refugees or any refugee coming here to seek freedom. We call on congregations to take an active part in the resettlement of refugees. By 1979, the Union for Reform Judaism would tout our movements having organized a national effort with the goal of sponsoring a minimum of 1,300 refugees within our congregations and movement. That work, stretching far beyond Reform Judaism, of course, was enormously successful. As Ha wrote in 2016, Today, the 1.3 million immigrants from Vietnam and their 300,000 or so children, along with their culture and cuisine, are just one of, of many more inextricable strands of the American fabric. On this August 19th, Rabbis Hara Person and Lewis Cameras have asked us to repeat history. Recalling the Reform Jewish community's legendary support for the Vietnamese vote people, Reform rabbis demand that the Biden administration and Congress expedite legal immigration status for Afghans who are now at risk. We urge Reform rabbis and the communities they serve to join in the, in the humanitarian effort that will be necessary when the refugees reach safe haven in the United States, Canada, and other allied nations. Congregation B'nai Israel has pledged to sponsor an Afghan family, together with Trinity Cathedral and the Daughters of Abraham. When a family comes to Central Arkansas and is assigned to our team by Catholic Charities, you will hear more about how you can help us indicate that we have learned America's positive lesson. On this Shabbat Shuvah, as we seek repentance, individually and collectively, let us resolve not to repeat our wrongdoings in the past as individuals or as a nation. But at the same time, let us also look to those moments in our personal and national history when we were at our best, when America was at its best. And then let us all work to multiply that goodness into the future. Amen.